All right. Well, thank you for joining this week's tips and trick tips and tricks webinar. Um, today's topic is threat hunting with checkpoints harmony endpoint. Please use the Q and A chat if you have any questions. We'll make sure we answer those during the webinar. Um, with that, we'll get started. Our presenter today is a threat engineer, Scott Kite. Scott, take it away. Good morning, uh, and uh, let me get my screen shared. I just realized I'm not sharing my screen, which is definitely going to be uh, problematic. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, threat hunting and a couple of other things within uh, our Harmony Endpoint software. Um, as far as who am I, uh, as Rob pointed out, I'm a security architect. I work within the Harmony team. I focus specifically on um, a, a variety of our solutions, including uh, Harmony Endpoint as a total solution, which if you're not terribly familiar with, it's a huge product with lots and lots of capabilities, um, and some of them uh, brand new, like our threat hunting capability. Um, and threat hunting simply is the capability of looking at an entire environment, not just one uh, device, not just one computer, but I want to see what the entire environment looks like. I want to know what processes are running on individual systems. I want to know a lot of information, all at a very, very simple um, interface that can do a lot of the, the heavy lifting, as it were, uh, for me as, uh, as an admin. So I want to be able to see what the overall environment looks like. I want to see proactively um, what types of things are running in my systems. Now, this includes both Windows and Linux. It's not, um, uh, you know, any one particular system. We're going to be including this um, in all of our products moving forward uh, for our Harmony Endpoint uh, systems uh, and be able to look through absolutely everything to identify, to help quantify, to help understand uh, what types of risks might we be facing, uh, how to help scope those risks, how to help uh, focus on resolving those risks, as well as giving you the ability to attack them directly. So why? why? What is the purpose of this? Well, obviously, you know, we need to figure out what the thing, what's going on. And right now, in most cases, when uh, we talk to customers and we say, well, how do you go and hunt a threat in your environment? They either, you know, put their hands up and they say, I'm not quite certain, or they say, well, what do you mean? Um, and that's, you know, kind of an issue. We need to be able to say, hey, we think there might be a threat. We need to actually figure out where that threat might lie. Um, so the threat hunting system is designed to look at your entire environment. So in, in a short stance, um, what it's doing is it's logging all the processes, all of the systems, all the accesses, um, uh, all of what's happening on each of the endpoints that we're protecting. And it's taking that log, presenting it to our in the cloud uh, endpoint service um, and allowing it to manage that data, allowing it to sort through information that would otherwise be just way too much information and pre presenting it to you in a way that you can search through your network, you can search through your environment uh, and find and identify uh, the very specific things. Now, the next thing is, well, how do I look at all this information? You know, what's the, um, what's the focus of all this information? And that in the traditional sense, when we look at threat hunting in a traditional sense, when we talk about how to find a problem right now for most of our customers, that scope is too big. They can't really find the end destination. They can't really look for every system that has a particular process running on it. Um, that's related to something else that is part of a problem that is uh, an indicator of a trigger. Solar winds, for instance, when solar winds gets into your environment, how do you find all the bits and pieces that are tied to it? How do you um, uh, target each individual piece uh, and then equip yourself with a way to resolve the issue? Um, and that's the part where threat hunting as a general rule comes in and helps um, uh, provide that system. Uh, but the next thing is what equipment, um, you know, does it specifically require or specifically support? Um, we have seen some solutions that have some of the ideas around some of this particular product, not, nothing that has everything. Uh, and those systems generally require lots of licensing, lots of hardware, lots of other systems. This is an all in the cloud solution. There isn't um, anything that you need for threat hunting other than uh, Harmony Endpoint. That's it. Once you have Harmony Endpoint, um, you have this particular piece. 
It's just something you turn on and you're good to go uh, as long as you've set the policies so that such that the systems have this enabled. Once it's enabled, all of the logs come back into the cloud and it's managed and it's done. There is nothing more for you to do, which is fantastic. Um, like I said, we've looked at some other solutions that require lots of hardware, lots of different pieces in different places. Um, we find that to be inefficient and difficult. Um, and I think that, you know, if you look at your own systems and you compare it to what I'm about to show you, you'll probably agree that it, it has um, severe advantages to come to this, the type of solution that Checkpoint is offering. Um, and finally, you know, the goal here, just to be uh, clear with threat hunting, is to identify what types of threats exist in your environment in an easy, provable, specific manner uh, and allow you to get on with your day and say, hey, we had a problem. This was it. This is where it, li it lies. These are the systems that were affected. Um, you know, um, I don't mean to beat up on solar winds too much as far as the attack was concerned, uh, but it is something where a lot of our customers are like, well, I don't know if I still have it. I don't know if it's stuck somewhere out of my network. This is a way to look through the entire environment, find all of the bits and pieces and processes and leftover uh, information that could still be an issue uh, somewhere in your environment in a way that would otherwise be very, very difficult to find. So um, if you have uh, any questions, we're going to go over a couple more things, uh, including the interfaces. Uh, but please feel free to uh, put those into chat and, and ask us some questions, because there's a lot of detail here uh, about what we can get out of it. So uh, with that, I'm going to walk through uh, a little bit of the interface. So um, this, uh, what you see in front of you, is the interface for threat hunting. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Harmony Endpoint as a, as a rule, um, this is Harmony Endpoint. This is our web interface for Harmony Endpoint. Um, this is not quite the same. Uh, well, it's the this is the cloud version of it. So if you are an endpoint customer and you have endpoint on-premise, um, threat hunting is not currently a capability of a, the on-premise system. It is only in the cloud. It, you know, we'll look towards the future and how we can add that uh, onto the on-prem solutions. But this is included in the on uh, in the cloud uh, environment. If you have an in the cloud environment, if you look down the left hand side, you will see threat hunting. If this is something you want to try out, you can go to portal.checkpoint.com. We'll give me a give me a call. We can talk about it later, and we can try to help walk you through how to get this turned on and how you can check it out. But Suffice it to say, this is what the interface looks like. It's pretty simple. Um, and what it's doing is, like I said, it has gone out to all of my machines. In this case, I only have three, two Windows and one Linux. Um, and it has basically created a log of everything that's happened in that particular machine. Um, and it's evaluated those logs for a number of different items. Now, on this particular machine, I have, uh, you can see, I have two active attacks. They're not real active attacks. I don't want my own machines to be actively attacked, but I have created some things that generate um, um, uh, attacks using real malware, but limited. We've, we've broken it slightly so that they don't actually affect my particular machine. Um, and to show you what we look, what we see on the machine itself, I go here to display overview. Um, if you're familiar, like I said, with checkpoint uh, endpoint security, when we uh, evaluate a, an attack in a system, we generate a forensic log. And you can see here, I have a bunch of forensic logs. These are uh, generated by this particular system. Um, and these are different attacks. And if I open up one, okay, fine. I'm going to open up an attack, and this is going to tell me information about um, what attack occurred, where was it, what types of things happened. In this case, you can see I have script processes, I have data changes on my environment, um, and I have other systems and things going on. This is key. This is absolutely necessary, and this is really useful for you to understand where was a problem, what happened, when, where, and why. This is not threat hunting, by the way. I just want to point this out. This is forensics. This is, I have a problem, I had a problem on one particular machine, I want to go, I want to understand what happened, and this is the way you can do that. You can see I had an active, um, or the status is active, it was a PowerShell, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of good information here. Um, if you are, uh, if you believe you've been attacked um, and you need to work with law enforcement, we support uh, the full MITRE ATT&CK framework interface uh, for this. But either way, this is a way to look at one machine. That's really useful, it's really awesome. But how do I compare this? How do I go from here? How do I look at my 
my tree timeline, which tells me where attacks occurred, what types of systems let it in, you know, what was the content um, uh, of a PowerShell script, et cetera. These are all great things. But this tells me one machine. How do I go from this particular interface, this particular machine, this particular information, and I want to look at my entire environment. I want to know how does this relate to other systems. Well, that is where this particular system comes in and the, the, the threat hunting comes in. In this case, you can see I've had active attacks in my environment. And if I click on that active and uh, the active attacks, I mean, it will take me to the detection event that was active attacks. Uh, that's it. That's as hard as it was for me to actually be able to see where the attacks were when they occurred from a central point not from that one workstation, not from my logs where I need to um, look at that one machine, et cetera. This is in my entire environment. If I had 50 machines in here that had different attacks, you would see I have 50 different machines, different attacks, different information. I'd have all the information about uh, what occurred, when, where, and why uh, right here. It is absolutely phone simple. So for understanding and for being able to hunt uh, for a particular attack, this is key. Now, the types of information that you can get out of it, obviously, you know, there's a lot. So I can see uh, that there's a PowerShell script. I can see all the arguments that are passed to the, the script itself, um, files that were attached to that script, et cetera. All this information is available in the threat hunting system itself. Um, we also have, uh, 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 in here, um, more information. This is just a simple way. Of, there's a lot of different um, uh, uh, ways of looking at the different information. So this was just a simple way for me to show, but I can look at everything from uh, registry records because this actually will have generated a, a, um, uh, an update uh, in my system that affected the registry. So uh, uh, based off of an attack that we know of. So all I have to do is create a, a search in this case, I'm searching registry that was modified by process name PowerShell, which obviously, um, and the registry contains some particular piece. So if I know that an attack occurred somewhere in my environment and that this is uh, what was uh, going on with that particular uh, attack, that I have had a registry, cheat, registry key changed, updated, modified by a particular um, uh, executable, I can search for that. Now that's real specific. That's really interesting though, because if I need to understand my entire environment, how else could I do this? I can't go to each individual machine if I have 50,000 machines and try to search for this type of information, but yet you can. This information is here. This information is absolutely 100% available to you uh, as an admin throughout your entire enterprise, which is something that uh, to my knowledge doesn't exist anywhere else. Fantastic uh, capability, fantastic ability to get information um, out of the system that you really need to get out of it to be able to, from this point, go, go and say, hey, this particular machine, it's got height A, A, B, B, has been affected by something, um, and be able to define what the scope is of my remediation, what the scope is of this particular system. Now, of course, I also want to be able to create an action. Now, I, I have this disabled of this particular machine, but there is the capability of an action here. So I could isolate my machine. If I had the firewall enabled, I could do that. Um, and I can also trigger a forensics analysis of that particular machine right from here or quarantine um, uh, information and terminate processes. So I actually have the capability from within the threat hunting. If I do a search and I find something in my environment, I find some information that I think is really key to the overall experience, I have the ability to interact with and activate uh, those protections right from within this interface. For one machine, 50,000 machines, it's all good. That's uh, uh, absolutely the capability. Now, of course, you know we're not just talking about processes in a basic sense, we're talking about all kinds of different things. Uh, so if I look here, I can see that I have an HTTP sensor. Get to the right page. Uh, I have an HTTP sensor that you know we're going to go out and see did this system open up certain types of um, uh, web pages. Um, in this case, there was a network access to a website called HTTP Forever. Um, in and of itself, not terribly meaningful, but in this particular case, we're treating it as if it were malicious. Um, but if it were a malicious action, this information would also be safe. So we would see that this particular device opened up a particular page. This is very key in terms of ransomwares. Um, if we're looking for systems that may have reached out to uh, a ransomware location to pull down 
you know, a key that they're that it's going to need in the future for decrypting or whatever uh, might be going on with that particular attack. We're going to give you the exposure, give you the interface, give you the access to see that that was occurring, uh, and uh, know the systems that 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 may have been triggered upon. Um, maybe there was an entry point, and then the entry point itself was not considered malicious, um, but the end destinations were. This is a way to search for this information to see what types of systems were accessing what types of data, and it's completely definable by you. While I'm clicking on this stuff, it's just creating. This. If I go up here, I can actually modify this to be whatever I want. Obviously, if I change it to something else, it's going to find nothing. Uh, but these are all completely up to you. However, you want to modify this, create these particular scripts, create these particular searches um, is absolutely up to you for what information you want. Uh, in terms of what information is up here, let me get rid of all this because there's a lot of stuff there. If I want to search, you can see I can search for a lot of information. Like I said, when, when, when I was describing what it is that we are uh, uh, capturing out of the entire environment, there's a lot of information. You know, think about all the different things that you're seeing on the screen that right now. Would this be useful to you to understand and be able to search for, be able to find these types of pieces of information anywhere in your environment? To me, if I was looking at my environment, absolutely. These are all key. These are all the types of things that I may need. Hopefully not, but may. And that's important to be able to have this information available to you um, at any time. Uh, in terms of uh, a, a, a really specific one that I think is also key, you can see here, I'm going to search for PowerShell um, that has a test string in it. Now think about that. How many PowerShell scripts get executed in your environment? You have five computers or five, uh, 5,000, they're gonna be PowerShell scripts. You have developers who are running PowerShell scripts all the time. If I want to figure out, did somebody execute a command in a PowerShell script? Absolutely, here you go. This is it. I've, I've created that. I have a process name I'm looking for scripts in a PowerShell that have a test string. That's it. I'm just looking for this test, this text of te test string. There's no other way that I know of that you can do that in your environment and have this information be presented in such a useful, easy way. Uh, and you can see who ran it, what particular machine. Absolutely a uh, piece of cake to define this, to create these types of scripts, to create this information. Uh, et cetera. Um, to me, I think this is a no-brainer. Now, the other thing that we do from within this um, is we actually do have a bunch of predefined uh, queries. So while I was clicking on a, another page that had some stuff related to the test attacks I've, I've uh, been demonstrating, we also have in here a bunch of um, uh, uh, real-world attacks, and we're adding to this all the time. So as uh, other things show up, as other attacks show up in the real world, you can see we're going to create those. So like Print Nightmare is the uh, the newest hotness that's already in here. Um, and if I want to run the script, hopefully I hopefully it doesn't show anything since this is my uh, my test lab, but um, it's going to basically search through the environment uh, for the information that we know, that Checkpoint knows of related to this particular process. And fortunately for me, I am completely clean. This is awesome. But in the case of 50,000 machines, this is a good thing to run just in case that this may have uh, existed in the environment somewhere maybe a concern, maybe something you need to hunt down um, and, uh, you know, go from there. So um, let me see any other things I want to show. You can see, like I said, there's a lot of information here um, uh, uh, and um, a lot of capabilities in here. Um, there's ways to bookmark um, the items that you want to show on a continual basis. So if you define your own process, your own search up at the top, you can create a bookmark. Um, that will have a, a, that search be available to you at any time. Um, we also have uh, coming soon uh, for each of the different attacks, we'll have a, a MITRE attack uh, framework uh, for being able to understand what's going on in your environment based off of threat hunting. Um, this is, as it says, beta, so don't, don't use it just yet unless you're, uh, uh, you really need to. And if you really need to, you should probably be talking to our incident response team. But um, suffice it to say, uh, if you're not familiar with this, I highly recommend uh, checking out a, a MITRE attack. Uh, it is a way to define information um, and prevent, uh, provide it in a, uh, an agnostic format. So in other words, this 
is very checkpointy. You know, this is the way that checkpoint presents information. We tell you what um, uh, what we understand. We present it in a very easy manner. Every vendor pre prevents or presents this information in different ways. Some present it with in difficult ways, <laughs> present it in easy ways like this. Um, but um, when we're talking about vendor agnostic ways, MITRE ATT&CK is a framework to present all the information that you can gather out of this, but in a way that is agnostic, that can be compared and contrasted with others, uh, and it is incredibly useful for law enforcement. So since we're talking about threat hunting, when we're talking about the, uh, the, the bad stuff that people do, uh, law enforcement is probably something that you would be involved with if you actually need to um, uh, act upon something in here. So I want to, wanted to point that out. I want to make sure it's, it's clear that that is available both in terms of the threat hunting system, um, as well as um, in the, uh, wrong, uh, as well as inside of our forensics reports. These forensics reports, as they get generated, we do also generate a MITRE ATT&CK framework. So again, this same thing here um, is generated based off of what MITRE has put together as a uh, an agnostic format that can be reported to um, different law enforcement uh, facilities so that they understand the information in exactly the same way and they're not going to get confused by it. So otherwise, um, I, hopefully this uh, has been illuminating, interesting. Hopefully that there's some good details in here for you. Um, if there are any questions about the, the system, uh, about um, what's provided, uh, what types of access that this um, gets into your systems, uh, what types of services are available, um, please let me know. We're really excited about this. Really hope that um, if you're currently a, a Harmony Endpoint uh, a customer that you take advantage of it. Um, it is very, very easy to turn on. Actually, I did want to show you really quickly how to turn it on. Um, to turn this on is, is simply a, uh, an item in your policies. Um, so it's just basically just a threat hunting uh, policy item. All you have to do is enable it. Once you've enabled the, the, the item, it will start to um, uh, um, uh, 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 track data right here, enable threat hunting. So <clears throat> as a per policy item, keep this in mind, you know, if you're uh, used to using endpoint, you'll know, um, but if you're not used to it, um, each policy can be completely different. So, and here you can see, I have a whole bunch of different policies. Each one of these can be completely different. Some can have threat hunting enabled, some might not have threat, threat hunting enabled. If you turn this on and you have uh, the EFR blade installed, you're good to go. That's all you need. You need to make sure that those two things are in, uh, done. The EFR is installed and the threat hunting is on and you're done. The systems will automatically start tracking the processes, automatically track, start tracking the network access, automatically start providing that database uh, full information um, and give you the, the full view of your network. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind when I stated all this, one last thing that I'll add, this is not, I wanna know for the last two years, every last process that happened. This is an active system. So I wanna hunt a threat. I don't wanna hunt something from two years ago. That's, that's a, a, an archive. This is not designed as an archive, it's designed as a living in entity uh, for hunting down things that are going on in your environment. So just keep that in mind, this is not that super long-term log type system. This is a very um, uh, active uh, short-term logging system uh, for hunting threats specifically. So with that, I'll open it up uh, for questions and um, uh, comments. Uh, yes, yeah, Scott. Uh... On that page you were just on, when you clicked on the threat hunting, is that a something you have to license, or is that included with it? Or good question. So the threat hunting uh, is included um, in in the the uh, uh, the system itself. So this is not uh, for most people. That if you have a very specific license, it has a very limited uh, feature set. Obviously, you know, let's talk. Um, but for most customers, this is included in the under the overall license for uh, Harmony Endpoint. Uh, and, and all you have to do is turn it on. And you said that is currently not available for on-premise endpoint management? Correct. Not available on-prem. This is only available in the cloud. Um, we do require some cloud stuff to make this, and make the magic happen. Um, that may change in the future, but for right now, it's cloud only. But the forensics you showed is already available on the Absolutely. Yeah, the, the forensics capabilities and generating these, uh, these wonderful reports um, this is fully uh, available in both um, uh, uh, in the cloud and on-prem. Um, but like I said, this is 
on the particular computer and in the log, you'll have individual attacks, which is great to have this particular information, um, but it's not quite as, as awesome as the, uh, uh, the threat hunting interface. Okay. Um, is this the friends, no, I'm sorry, not forensics, the threat hunting. Um, yes. Can you ingest logs from other products or sources or is this just the checkpoint endpoint? This is just checkpoint endpoint at this point. Um, that may change in the future. Uh, I know that there's been some discussions about um, what other information can we ingest into the system, but I, I can't make any guarantees about that or qualify time frames or anything. Um, you know, we, we try very hard, but the information is, this is a lot of really good information. Um, and once you start adding other things in, it may cloudy the, the, the scope a little bit, uh, but obviously it's a consideration. Um, click on your first tab there with all those links that you showed. Sure. Now, is this page, you know, created for what it sees, or are these static links? I mean, how do you? How is this? This specifically, this particular page was just for the um, uh, uh, the, the testing that I was running. So this is just a whole bunch of um, uh, basically uh, pre pre filled in links. So basically, it's just filling in this stuff. That's all it's doing is those links okay. are just creating this information. They're just bookmarks for, for searches. Gotcha. So rather than me having to type all these in while I'm on the call, <laughs> I figured we'll use those links because it'll yeah, be easy right now. Perfect. Uh, let's see, was that anything? Uh, links that create, yeah, more questions on the product. I think we covered that. Uh, forensics. Oh, I think that covers it. Is there anything else, please? pop it in there. Uh, but thank you, Scott. Great information. Um, like Scott said, you know, I'll, I'll include, the, you know, some of this information in the follow up email, but anything you want to dig into, you know, we can talk to your SC or we can reach out to Scott directly um, and talk about any of this if you have any other additional questions. Um, our next webinar will be in two weeks on July 30th. You'll see an invitation for that soon. Um, no more questions rolled in. So, okay. Thank you, Scott. Thank you everybody for joining us and uh, we'll see you back here on our next call. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Scott. Thanks everybody.